Greetings, deceivers and non-deceivers. This is Insane Orangutan. This is Insane Orangutan. Um, this is going to be a long video set. So, uh, it's going to be a long one. And I'm going to be reading and talking about Romans 1 and 2. Romans 1 is often misquoted and misinterpreted intentionally, of course. That happens when people don't want to know what Paul is saying. So I'm going to do re read Romans 1 and 2. And this is probably this is going to be a long video set. What I want to make clear is we're not talking about your Sunday school Christians, your Sunday church Christians, or your Sunday people at all. We're not, okay, we're ta Paul was talking about um, something that, a type of Christianity that we don't have today. So, as I've said before, this is um, to outsiders to explain what Paul was talking about. Um, and this is grossly misquoted and misinterpreted. It is June the 5th, uh, a Saturday. This was to people who have been taught the grace of God, not those who have been berated. And Paul said, Paul, a bondservant of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus, called an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, or good news of God. Paul's talking about the good news here, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who was born of the descendant of a descendant of David according to the flesh, who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. This is not your grandma's Christianity. According to the spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord or Master, would probably be a better rendering, through whom we have received grace. That's, that, that's the point of what Paul is saying in the first two chapters of Romans is grace not condemnation and not judgment, but he's talking exactly opposite of that stuff. He's saying what he thinks is wrong, what I agree is wrong, but he's saying that is not, especially for people who are inside of Christ, which I believe that the people on YouTube are not inside of Christ. He is talking about that they treat one another with grace. And that's the point of what Paul's saying. through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience, the obedience, okay? So Paul's talking about obedience here, what you should do, what's the right, what's the right way to obey God. And that gets on, and that gets on into, into, into past in Romans 1 into Romans 2. To bring about the, bring about obedience of faith. And it's of faith. The obedience is not of works it's of faith and the works come you know as people would say the works come afterwards in a sense the work starts with the obedience of faith because obedience is a work but the good works follow those who believe to bring about the obedience of faith among all the nations or gentiles for his name's sake among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are beloved of God in Rome, called saints, called holy, holy ones, or called holy, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Master, Jesus Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's to Rome. First, 
I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. So it's thankfulness and it's grace and peace. Grace to you and peace. For all of you because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. For God whom I serve in my spirit in the good news or gospel of his son is my witness how I unceasingly make mention of you always in my prayers making <clears throat> making request if perhaps now at last by the will of God I may succeed in coming to you for I long to see you so that I may impart some spiritual gift to you that you may be established that is that I may be encouraged together with with you among you each of us by the other's faith both yours and mine I do not want you to be unaware brethren or brothers that I have often that often I have planned to come to you and have been prevented so far so that I may obtain some fruit among you also also even as among the rest of the Gentiles or nations I am under obligation both to the both of the Greeks and to the barbarians both both to the wise and the foolish Paul is saying this is my responsibility so for my part I am eager to preach the gospel to you who are who, who you also who are in Rome these are already Christians for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is a power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, regardless of anything else. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, but the righteous shall live by faith or will live by faith. So Paul is saying, this is what you are qualified in. Regardless of your behavior, it's from faith, from faith to faith. And then there are those people that are outside of the faith. But Paul is writing specifically to those disciples of Christ. Not churchgoers, not Bible toters, not cross wearers but specifically to the people of God. And he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And how is it revealed? We'll see that. Against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because, and this goes on to chapter 2, so, so if you want to hear the rest of it, it goes on to chapter 2, and it says some other stuff. Uh, explains what he's saying here. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God has made it evident within them, evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks but became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of, of, of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man. So we're talking about idolatry and that kind of thing. Cor of corrup corruptible man, and of birds, and four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. We're talking about sexual immorality. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is, for, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, 
God gave them over to a depraved mind to do, and this is what we're seeing on YouTube, to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, it gets, the list gets worse, deceit, malice, gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, um, and although they didn't, they know the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. Part 2.